today, I had a hard time trying to justify or do justice rather to the work that's been done. It's hard to capture in the right words to, or describe the significant body of work that you'll receive today and you'll receive copies of the report. I was looking for Madam Mayor. <laughs> And I set up the um, chairs. <laughs> Thank you for having the vision and providing the, the platform and opportunity to make the difference in Baltimore's future. Thank you for making minority women-owned businesses your major initiative. The journey for us started last July, and for eight months we examined, engaged in great debate, listened to our colleagues, empathized at public forums, and gained a better understanding of Baltimore's procurement. But what's been the hallmark, the primary hallmark of this journey is the Advisory Council. Never before has there been such a group comprised of passionate individuals focused on the greater good. They hunkered down with their own competitors, colleagues, they dealt with people they admired, and they dealt with people they didn't like as much. But everyone had their eyes on the ultimate prize, so thank you. Thank you also to my team, Christine Bivens and Myra Blanchard, they're very smart and patient women. You know, the Advisory Council had a diverse background, and not just diversity in terms of gender or race and that kind of stuff, but gen um, diversity in terms of their acumen. And I, I would submit that I don't think that there's been a collection of individuals that come at a high price. To understand around that table where some of the greatest minds and greatest folks respected across this country on this topic, and so we're grateful. But today we stand on tremendous shoulders, but I submit to you, when we look back on this years from now, what we will find is that your shoulders will be the ones they stand on for what you have done for us. I can assure you the recommendations found in, in this report sets the bar of excellence, it blazes new trails, and it will make Baltimore an economic leader in inclusion. Now we could not have done that, and, and when I tell you I was being kind of um, mild in my description about the kinds of conversations that happened around that table and the interaction that, that took place, but that could not have happened without the right kind of leader in place. He took us out of our comfort zones. He came prepared with the blue pen that gave us the blue sky. And so therefore, uh, he is to be commended. I'd like to introduce him at the time and the person that, she, that, uh, that um, was the chair of this great advisory council was Mr. Bob Wallace, Robert L. Wallace, who is also chief executive of this group. Thank you all. Thank you very much. And, and, and I too want to um, thank the mayor for her leadership, Deputy Mayor, I told the most for your leadership, Director Pender, uh, Myra and Christine for your commitment to us. I do appreciate that. And more importantly, I want to thank the, 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 the council members themselves. I think as, as Director Pender said, you know, and I did a calculation and I looked at the hours that we put in and if they were able to build those hours on the market, that this group, this body has invested over half a million dollars into the city. And we, and we did that because we love the city. And this is a, a labor, a labor of love. One thing the mayor made very clear to us, this is not business as usual. She said, go big or go home. And so we had the challenge of identifying what approach we would take to make this happen. So the mayor will give you some details of the action that's going to be taken, but I want to give you, I want to step back a minute and give you a perspective on the process. Because we, we started out with the idea of creating the future. See, see it, it's natural and normal for, for people to move towards that which is certain. That's just human nature. We said, no, we can't do it that way. Let's move towards that which is possible. 
And thus our model became to create the future and work backwards. What do we want this to be? What do we want the system to be such that the environment is created where, where women and, and people of color can build successful businesses in our city? And that became our directive, to create the future and then to work backwards. And so there are three themes that I want to leave with you in terms of what we focused on in our deliberation for eight months, right? Three themes. Number one was intentionality. Intentionality. What we said was that every effort that is made by the city to build the economic base has to include the reality of minority and women in small businesses in that conversation, right? And that requires that we are intentional in terms of the process. The second initiative was one of velocity, right? Velocity, and that is speed. Right? How do we grow businesses once they get into the process? How do we grow them quickly? And we call that velocity. And the third initiative was we call sustainability. So once they're in and they're growing quickly and robustly, how do we sustain them such that they are creating wealth and creating jobs? So those were the three initiatives, intentionality, velocity, sustainability. So given that initiative, those three initiatives and themes, we drove that through what you see here behind me. This is our model, right? And there are three phases of that model I want to talk to you about. The bottom phase is the foundational stuff, right? The foundational stuff. That includes procurement policy, compliance and accountability, and creating a business-friendly culture. So the recommendations that you will see and you hear from the mayor, some of them, a summary of them, and that in more detail is in the report, right, will focus on a foundational approach in the city that makes it easier for us to attract and retain businesses, minority women businesses, small businesses in our city. That is the foundational aspect. And what you'll see above that in the model here are what we call the vectors or the pillars of growth, right? I call them vectors. I'm an engineer, so I use engineering terminology. Right, Shalanda, which Shalanda is, right? <laughs> Vector, so, right? Speed and magnitude, right? So the idea is these things here, things like um, strategic partnerships, prime contracting, how to get more minority businesses to be prime contractors, right? Capacity building, being able to handle larger and more lucrative contracts, financing and prompt payment. We all know, those of us who are in business, that cash is king. Cash is king. So the idea is how can the city create an environment where small businesses get paid faster and more promptly? Can I get an amen to that? Yeah. All right. And then we have economic development initiatives. These five vectors here are what we're focused on in our study to increase the velocity of growth. We can't wait 20 years to make this happen. It has to happen faster. So speed becomes very, very critical. And then lastly is sustainability, right? It does us no good as a city to bring businesses to the city to grow them and then to have them either leave the city or to die on the vine. So sustainability says, how do we create the environments that those who are growing and who are prospering continue to grow and continue to prosper? And we have recommendations also that tie into how do we sustain businesses who are already here and making a contribution. Now the question many of you are probably asking now is, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? And we all know that this is just the beginning. This is not the end. This is the beginning, all right? And so we have some ideas the mayor will talk to you about in more detail about how we move forward here to implement these recommendations. But as I close, I wanna, I wanna share this with you. There, there, there's an old saying that, that, that talk is cheap. You ever heard that before? Yeah. Talk is cheap, okay. And that may be true. But let me change that saying a little bit. Let me say that talk is good. Because when we talk, that's how we create the future. When we say it, and we plan it, and we mean it, that becomes the future. So talk is good. So if I change that address, I would say that talk is good, but action is better. Talk is good, but action is better. Let me now introduce a lady who's all about action, our mayor, 
I mean, if that's what I'm saying, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. And as I said, uh, while you were talking, thank God you all didn't bill us. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> What is it? Rick, uh, Councilwoman Spector always says uh, when t someone is volunteering that you're, you're good, but you're good for nothing. And I appreciate, and I appreciate being, you know, free. Yeah. I mean, I know. You know what I mean. I have to say how proud I am of the work uh, that this um, advisory council has done, and I agree with Director Pinder that had it not been for the leadership bomb, uh, I don't believe that we would be here. So thank you for lending uh, your your voice and and your acumen to this endeavor. Uh, it's one thing to bring the, the the best and the brightest around the table, but you know you have to corral everybody. And, and work toward a, a common goal, and I, I really feel like we uh, have the right person with you, so I want to thank you for that. We did bring together some incredible thought leaders and business experts on this topic, and you've done a tremendous job. Your proposals will help us spur development and spur growth uh, of new businesses in Baltimore, and we're fortunate to have so many people uh, who, rep who represent government, uh, or government representatives who are with us today in support of uh, all of these efforts. I'm very pleased uh, that my colleague in the council, Councilman Ricky Spector, is here. Thank you very much, the Dean of the City Council, and Councilwoman Helen Holton, who uh, was, was uh, very generous with her time on this effort. Uh, we have a, uh, a, re a count, uh, I'm about to call you council president. Carolyn um, Blakeney is here on behalf of uh, city council president Jack Young, who is probably still in the board of estimates. I said we, we could not have picked a worse morning uh, to, to do this. Usually we maybe have one or two protests. I think when uh, I had to excuse myself, it was we were on protest number uh, six. And. We have a representative from, where is Kai, here on behalf of Councilwoman Middleton. Thank you very much for being here uh, as well. And Amy Stratton here representing uh, Council, uh, Councilman Congressman uh, Cummings and State Senator Bill Ferguson. Thank you uh, for being here. And uh, I'm going to give the, continue to give credit where credit is due for it. someone who's not only here as an elected official, but uh, worked on this as well, and that is Delegate uh, Barbara Robinson. So again, thank you. I really want to give a special thank you to uh, my team from the Mayor's Office of Minority and Women Owned Business Development, my director, Sharon Pinder. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I knew that not only could we do more when it, when it came to minority and women uh, owned businesses, but we must do more when it comes, uh, you know, from the city. And in order to do that, you have to have someone who has a track record, who has the, the uh, connections with the community and the credibility to take us where we need to go. And I've, I've got it all in one beautiful package with Sharon Pender, so thank you very much. And I also want to thank Tom Corey, the Chief of Minority and Women um, uh, Business Opportunity Office, who I'm sure is still upstairs in the board. Oh, you just made it? Yeah, thank you for making it. Getting here, and I also want to thank uh, Deputy Chief Kalupi Parthimos, along with many others from my team who served as an ex officio uh, member of the uh, of the council. You know, your team, uh, Kalupi, has uh, worked uh, so diligently in making sure that we get this right. Uh, so I want to thank you very much. So to the ladies and gentlemen of the Advisory Council, again, I say thank you. You've answered the call for small minority and women-owned businesses everywhere. Uh, your work provided us with a new day and a better way. The Advisory Council members, I ask you to please stand so we can all recognize you. Thank you. 
Now you've taken time away from your businesses, from your families, and other commitments in order to work for the greater good. The city of Baltimore is a beneficiary of your efforts, and years from now, we will look back at this moment as a pivotal time in our history. In July, I stood here with the Advisory Council and asked them to think outside of the box. As Bob said, I uh, said, you know, go big or go home. I challenged the group to rethink the strategies and solutions of the past and develop bold new recommendations to address the fundamental structural impediments in the city's MBE, MBE and WBE program. We, had, uh, we have had an MWBE program for over three decades. Uh, and it's really not netted us the results that it was created for. The recommendations contained in the report make good business uh, sense, and I, and I stand by them. A strong uh, minority and women-owned business enterprise program benefits and strengthens our entire business community. And I want to thank uh, our, our comptroller, Joan Pratt. And Jeff, I'll give you two, two shout-outs, because I recognize Carolyn on your behalf, but thank you for being here, uh, Council President. Uh, Jack Young, who is passionate about uh, creating uh, minority and women-owned businesses in our city and making sure that Baltimore is a place where these businesses can thrive. So thank you uh, very much uh, for being here. So the, the net result of implementing the, uh, the recommendations filled in the report will reduce the cost of government, enhance our tax base, attract more businesses and residents to the city, and create jobs which will help us continue to reduce unemployment. A new day, a better way will play a significant role in laying the groundwork for, uh, for a future where minority and women-owned businesses are considered primary players in the city of Baltimore to produce competitively viable companies. We must address long-standing impediments to growth and provide solutions for uh, ranging from bonding initiatives and access to working capital to programs such as mentor protege initiatives. These are the creative, out of the box uh, ideas that I was looking for when we put this council together. We have to be intentional about our positioning, uh, for, uh, in positioning our businesses for the future. It's so very important to understand that we must have a significant presence at the table today in order for minority and women businesses to compete in the global marketplace in the future. Through purposeful economic inclusion, uh, MWBE firms can be at the center of emerging high growth industries. And that's what's important. You know, it, 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 inclusion is important, but it's also important to focus on these high growth areas where we're not talking about you know, getting a cut of a limited pie, but working on creating endless possibilities for growth. So by doing these things now, we can ensure that we will be positioned to become economic drivers of the next generation. And based on the recommendations of the Advisory Council, we are going to immediately pursue three initiatives. Our initial steps will be creating task force to develop the fo developing the uh, following pilot program. First, the Green, Healthy, and Sustainable Homes Project. Working with HABC, and I want to thank uh, our commissioner, Paul Graziano, for being here with us today. So working with HABC, we've already identified 5,000 shovel-ready home renovation and weatherization projects. Special recruitment efforts will be undertaken to ensure that MWBE firms are included in the weatherization training and certification programs so they, they can be included on the, approval contract, on the approved contractor list for residents to hire for this work. Second, the Urban Solar Initiative Pilot Program. We are immediately establishing a work group that will undertake a feasibility study and develop a pilot project action plan utilizing the best public-private partnership models for fully financing and promoting large-scale installation of solar panels. In some communities, installation of roofs, rooftops or ground-level solar, solar panels could reduce electric utility costs for residents and businesses by 40 to 50 percent. And I'll take that, without raising taxes or adversely affecting the quality of life in our city. And third, the formation of an innovation cluster or, techno or technology initiative. This could be done in partnership with our anchor institutions and our HC HBCUs, promoting collaboration of regional entities in the information sharing, 
technology transfer by ensuring diversity among each category of participants. I'm so proud that, you know, I, I said this was not about getting a new report, a glossy report, which is pretty. I'm not going to take anything away from you. But I said in order for this to be meaningful, we had to have things that we could undertake immediately and show a difference. So there are just, those are just three of the recommendations put forth by the Advisory Council. Uh, now the hard work begins. We have to remain focused on the task, and to that end, I'm creating a commission on supplier diversity and inclusion. This diverse group will advise the city on these matters and ask the tough questions. The commission will be our champions and assist with oversight of implementation of these recommendations. Small women and minority businesses are some of our key stakeholders, and we want to make sure that we continue to give you voice. Additionally, we will uh, launch the first regional mentor protege program, and I know this is something that Sharon is particularly <laughs> pleased about. Business is about relationships, and we need to leverage those relationships in order to generate revenue for businesses and for the city. Our goal is to make Baltimore a mecca for entrepreneurship. Amen. I believe, with your help, we can make that happen. In order to fulfill that goal, we have to begin at home by making city government more business friendly. We have to attract businesses from outside of Baltimore, and we want to focus on retaining and growing the uh, loyal business owners that we have right here in our midst. We're using the resources we have, and we're going to make sure that the economic benefits from these recommendations extends to our communities. It's important that we make sure our initiatives extend to the parts of the city with the highest unemployment rates to utilize our existing workforce. We rise and fall all together. In addition to the focus we need to place on small minority uh, and on small minority and women-owned businesses, we have to make sure that we are uh, focused on the most vulnerable in our populations. And if we do this, we will have a much more robust economy to generate uh, more revenue. We will strengthen our tax base and, and support our efforts to grow Baltimore by 10,000 families over the next 10 years. Thank you again for all of your hard work and for making this a new day and identifying a better way for Baltimore's future. And now, I think I have to thank you. Thank you for all of your work. I think, are, we, are you closing this out? Are we gonna do questions? I can take a few questions. Yes, sir. <clears throat> because it's about relationships. So I'll renew um, our, our uh, offer and uh, request to work with you. Uh, we would love to have you as part of this team as we continue to, to uh, move Baltimore forward. The protege program, you know, you're very, you have uh, a strong awareness of you know, the direction of business and I think your help would be invaluable. So we'd love to have you work with us on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 
the bottom of your image there talks about reforming procurement policy and procedures. I hope that it being at the bottom does not mean that it is how it is in prioritization. I am hopeful that it will be elevated significantly. Uh, one of the challenges that our small and minority businesses face is prompt payment, as was discussed. Um, lots of businesses are going out of business because the government is not paying its obligations properly. Um, that is an important, very important issue. And so I'd like to hear where does that fit? So it is, it is the foundation, uh, and it is a priority of my administration, and it's on the bottom because it is, it is the foundation exactly. in order for us to, to grow, in order for the rest of uh, you know, this to work, we have to get that right first, exactly right. Uh, and that's why it is there. Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Again, I want, and I don't know if, did you want to close this out or can I close no, this out? No, we're, we're going to distribute copies of the report. Yes, the beautiful and useful, dynamic uh, report. I, I want to thank again all of you for your patience, and, and I know I want to uh, thank the, the comptroller and the council president again for joining us. I scooted out a bit early from the, our, our BOE, and I know it was, I uh, appreciate you being here, and I, I want to thank uh, everyone for your hard work. Did you want to thank somebody? I do, or, I do, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to, to once again thank Director Pender. Um, it, it, this could not have happened without her leadership. And for her to pull together such a, 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 a diverse group of business leaders and keep us on, on target and on task is not easy. So I want to, uh, to applaud you, Director Pender. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for being here. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.